you guys don't understand how bad I wanted one of these. <laughs> Hi, the windows are open. I don't know what kind of noise that's gonna make. <laughs> hey. Oh boy. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. I am gonna recap my trip to Maryland Sheep and Wool today. This is the channel where I document my fiber journey, and guys, this is a trip with ups and downs. Most of the downs were my own fault and my own doing. Not every single one, you're gonna hear about it. I found something I've been looking for so long that I gave up looking. Um, more than a year ago, so I'm gonna tell you about it. It was my first time traveling alone with Luther in my new car, and it was just like, I loved every minute of it, but some stuff happened. I've gotta tell you all about it. We're all packed up, and my co-pilot is ready. <laughs> no, I don't need all this stuff, but yes, I kinda need all this stuff. So, we're all set. I will see you guys in Maryland. Actually, I'll probably see you on the road. Exciting! All right, let's go. All right, I don't know which way to go, but I'm gonna have to guess that we gotta go left. Pennsylvania and they bill you by mail for using the turnpike now and I'm so excited I can't even tell you thank you Pennsylvania I'm here and I brought all my stuff you guys look how cute this little patio is I got and it looks out look at my view it's cold and it's raining but it's really pretty and then we're gonna check out we're gonna check out my rental First of all, I have this huge, look at this, huge living room. There's my TV, all my stuff. <laughs> oh man. And there's my bedroom, let's go look at it. There's my best friend. He's probably really thirsty, so we're gonna get him some water really fast. Here's my cute little bathroom. Check out the ceilings, they're really, really high. This is really cute. And here's my wee kitchen, which I will totally be using. You know I will. Here's my little kitchen. Okay, now we're gonna check out my bedroom. I guess you just have to use these. Oh, there we go. Yeah, here's, there's some light. So here's my bed. This is where me and Luther are gonna snuggle tonight. I am going to unpack and I guess just sit and knit for a little bit. Um, I need to let John know that I'm here safe. And there's a little step going out of the bedroom that scares me, but it's okay. So, oh, look at all these windows too. Okay, the weather is terrible, but it did warm up a little. It was really cold this morning. Um, so we're just doing a little walkies. Here's the farm. Isn't it so cute? Oh, you guys, look. There are ducks on the farm. Look at, look. Did you find an egg? Did somebody just leave an egg? What the heck? I'm here, I'm at the line. That's why I would not normally for film while I drive, but I'm in line to go in and I'm super excited. I actually thought the line would have died down by now, but I bet a lot of people came a little later. It is a windy, cold, and rainy, but we're gonna have a great time. Are you ready? I'm so excited. Here we go. 
my god! It's way busier than I thought it was going to be. It's crazy. Okay, so all the booths are like closed up because it's so cold and it is a mud pit. But there's some amazing stuff here. I'm about to go into 100 Ravens. Wish me luck. Just in case you're wondering what heaven looks like. Nope, you're okay. <laughs> it looks like the used equipment auction at Maryland Sheep and Wall. Look at this. Wait, I'm gonna come down. These are all looms. Check this out. This whole room is going at one o'clock today. I bet you four or five years I've been looking for this kit. I'm buying it. Okay, so I first just met my first fiber triber and I'm about to walk down all the animal buildings and stuff. Look at all these beautiful fleeces. See, this is what I'm telling you guys about. They're growing them right now. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going in, but this is the fleece sale. I've seen people walking out with four and five fleeces already. So this is it, the other version of heaven. I'm back in the car, you can tell it is freezing, windy, cold, rainy. I'm gonna show you guys what I got, um, and I got to see Rhonda, so I will put a picture of us in here. And I gave her some stuff, Alice bought her some stuff, so I will see you guys soon. Oh, it's crazy. <sighs> I will say I learned from this experience. And my windows are open, so I think you guys probably will be able to hear the birds sing, and you might be able to hear the occasional car drive past. I will try and work around that if possible. Who knows, you might hear goats, you could hear the chickens, there's turkeys that walk by. We don't know what we're gonna get. The trip was, I loved every minute of it, but it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, and um, I think I disappointed some people. The parts that didn't go great, I blame myself for. So Friday morning, um, Luther and I left at like 7.20 and drove in the rain the entire like 700 miles or something to Union Bridge, Maryland is where my rental was. I did not make it very long at the festival. Deb, a lot of you guys know Deb from our group. She um, she drew my attention to the weather prior to leaving, and I had looked at the weather before that, and I looked again after she drew my attention to it, and I was like, I'll be fine. You know, 50 degrees isn't that bad. Um, it is gonna rain, I won't melt. I didn't pack right, so, which it, it does bother me, because first of all, I had plenty of room in my vehicle. Second of all, I had the whole day before I left to pack. Third of all, it isn't really my way. I'm more of a kitchen sink packer more of the time. I was trying to pack light because I knew I'd be doing all my own unloading, all my own loading with Luther, and I didn't you know, wanna overload myself. I was only staying for two nights. I definitely, I messed it up, basically. That's the only thing I can say. It was freezing all the way there. It was like in the 40s. Um, every time I stopped to get gas and all that stuff, it was just really, really cold. <laughs> And then when you top it off with the rain and you're, you know, getting like, you weren't drenched, but you were getting misted on at least all the time. And then you added some wind. <laughs> 
It did not make for a very comfortable trip. However, I loved every minute of it. I saw so much cool stuff. I did not go feeling like I wanted to buy a lot of wool. I feel surrounded by wool and sometimes I feel like my stash is too big already. So I'm not, I just wasn't in that mindset but I did buy some awesome stuff. So I wanna show you what I got. First of all, I went to the Matter Root booth. If you don't know Matter Root, you've seen me wear a t-shirt. I have a gray, a lighter gray t-shirt with a black sheep silk screened on it that I bought there in 2017 at Rhinebeck. I wear it all the time. You've probably seen it if you've seen this channel for any length of time. It is still perfect after five years of wearing it quite a bit, which is really weird because I've had so many t-shirts that don't last that long but I saw her booth I got so excited I was like oh I need a t-shirt um I bought three t-shirts but they're so affordable too they're like $20 a piece so I got this one is it not the cutest thing and then I also got I I actually could have bought like three more so I got this t-shirt knitted heart but um I just thought this was really cute and and it's very me so what the heck and then I also got a new gray t-shirt with a black sheep this is a different black sheep isn't that adorable she has tons of cute bags um what else was there I want to say there were hats maybe there's just so much stuff in that booth but I know that the t-shirts are what I'll get the most wear out of so that's what I got and I have so many darn bags already so then I went into the merch booth when I was at Rhinebeck last time the um the line for the merch booth was huge i mean huge huge and i went in and i did buy a shirt but um it took forever i have to tell you that i don't know if maryland has it organized better or if it wasn't that full because of the time i was there but like i literally walked in and walked up to the counter got the size and the shirt I wanted, went and paid and left. And it was like such an easy experience. It was awesome. I have to commend Maryland Sheep and Wool on their setup for that because again, I don't know if it was the time of day I was there. I was there at probably like noonish on Saturday and the weather was bad. So maybe people weren't there as much yet. I don't know. Oh, I have another story to tell you guys at that end, but I wanna show you the rest of what I got. So I went in and got a hooded long sleeve t-shirt. Now, I prefer like the pencil drawings and all those things um, personally, but it is very cute this year. Look at this cute sheet painting. So this is a long sleeve hooded t-shirt. It was $30, which I also think is pretty reasonable. People were really nice. It wasn't wildly packed like I actually expected it to be, especially the first time back after, you know, COVID shutdowns and everything. But it was, I would say, reasonably busy. So it was very fun. People were so nice. I got to meet some of you. I got to meet Rhonda. Rhonda is our, um, Rhonda is active in our group. She's been very busy in the past, I don't know, couple of months, I guess now. Um, they lost their home in a fire in Texas and I was bringing her some stuff. Our Another person in our group, Alice, bought a couple of braids for Rhonda and asked me to ship them directly to her and I was like, hey, I think I'm gonna see her in Maryland. Should I just bring them and give them to her and give her a hug? And I, so I got to hug her. I hugged her once for Alice and once for myself, took a picture and um, it was just wonderful. I got to meet more of you. In fact, you guys, the craziest thing happened. You have to hear it. I was walking out and I got stamped my stamp is gone already. I was walking out and I got stamped because I was gonna go to my car and warm up and come back in. <laughs> and I was walking out of down the pathway outside of the fairgrounds and Rhonda stopped me. I never would have recognized her because she had on a mask. And, and that was one of the things that I found hard is that number one, it was so muddy. Everyone was looking at the ground <laughs> trying not to like step in ankle deep mud or slide around on the mud. And then number two, people were bundled up and it's like hard to recognize people that way. Of course I wasn't bundled up because I didn't even bring a coat. I was like in a wool sweater. I'm so dumb, I know. So I was going to the car. I ran into Rhonda. She was like an hour and a half earlier, maybe two hours earlier than she thought she was gonna be. And she was like, Trish. So 
I said, let me go to the car and get your stuff. I didn't want to bring it in because I didn't know how much I'd get rained on and I didn't want it to get soaked. So I, I was like, can you just wait, you know, on the pathway? And her brother had brought her. She was visiting her wonderful brother in Maryland. He took her, took the afternoon and took her to the festival, which I think is so sweet. And he was really, really nice also. But um, she was just telling me some of the stuff that has happened since the fire. And I just have to say like her attitude about the situation, I'm sure she's had her moments, anyone would, but her attitude is so positive and like amazing. I didn't want to hold them up a long time. So I sort of speed walked to my car and I, probably this, maybe this is going to be too much of a story. I don't know. But when you drive into the fairgrounds, the police direct you in. Okay. I'm totally like blowing in the breeze. I'm Brooke Shields right now. So when you drive in, there's like tons of parking space. And I mean, acres of parking space on your right, acres of parking space on your left. The entire area on the right looked like it was filled up. And then on the left, almost the whole first like blocks, cause it goes in kind of blocks of spaces was full, was filled up. So. I was like, I'm gonna be sneaky. I'm gonna take a right and go down these parts that look full because I bet by now someone will have left. So I just went down and I could park much closer to the door that way. And But I was in a, an area where people weren't really driving to park because they thought it was all full. So I ran to my car, kind of ran, walked to my car, grabbed out her bag, threw my own new stuff that I had bought in and Right away, this lady next to me said, Trish, and I was like, hi. So one of you guys parked directly next to me in areas that looked like it was full. It was the craziest thing and it was so wonderful. So she introduced me to her husband, his name is John, hugged me, said she hasn't figured out how to be able to participate in chat, but she watches it all the time. Like. She was just so wonderful. She's a weaver. And so I just wanted to make sure I said hi again. That coincidence literally made my day. Like what are the odds that someone who watches this channel would park directly next to me in the area that appeared to be full? Like that's crazy. And then would just be getting out of her vehicle exactly at the moment where I'm getting something out of my vehicle for someone else. So we chatted for a few minutes, but I knew Rhonda was waiting for me, so I did have to excuse myself. And also, I'm sorry, I hope I didn't disappoint you doing that, but she was waiting for me. So I went back and brought her her stuff, and then I got back in the car. It was just gonna warm up and go back in, and then I was like, you know what? I feel like my day has been made. I got the next two things I'm gonna show you. I had just had such an amazing time already. I was cold. I was in wearing wet wool. I was just ready. So I ended up going back to my rental and um, I sat down, got in dry clothes, warmed up, thought about it for a little while, and then I was like, I checked my trip. Oh, there was more, you guys. In the morning, while I was getting ready, I discovered that there was a ceiling leak in my rental in the bathroom. I had put something under it to catch the water. I emailed the host to let them know. They never responded to me at all. It was wonderful. Meeting a couple of you guys was so great. It just made the whole trip worth every single second. I don't know why I'm getting choked up. You guys mean a lot to me. So that even though I was scared to do a meetup because I don't really know what it involves, I should have. So these are things that I did wrong. I didn't prepare for the weather at all. I should have been way better prepared, especially because I was driving so I could take as much stuff as I wanted. And um, I didn't schedule some sort of meetup. I should have done that. I regret it hugely actually, because I know that I would have gotten to meet a bunch more of you. And I I kind of feel like that was like more important than you know shopping. I have to tell you guys. So in August, I am planning on doing the Michigan Fiber Festival. I'm going to figure out a place to meet up if I hear a few of you want to, even if it's just a few. I feel bad that I didn't do it. I just really got this part wrong, if that makes sense. And I'm still trying to figure things out and figure out what am I really doing? <laughs> Not gonna lie, 
I, I really feel like this channel was really just meant to make a community uh, for you guys and for me and it has done that and it's like, I don't know, it's really hard to explain. It's really hard to explain. So I'm gonna show you the other two things that I got. I got them at the same booth. I don't think there's a tag on them, but I will look in my bag because I'm sure I have a receipt for them and I can tell you what booth I bought them from. I went into many other booths. I did buy two things that I cannot just get out of my stash. Probably three years ago, I was looking for ideas for videos on this channel and one of the ideas I had was to go on Ravelry and pick, um, you know how you can rate things by difficulty level? I was gonna pick something in the highest difficulty level and I was going to knit it or attempt to knit it for my channel. So I found something that I believe had a 10, which is the most difficult. I had it in my queue. I looked and looked and looked. Okay, so some of you guys are gonna know as soon as I say this what it is. The only way to get the pattern was to buy a full kit. What I had a problem with was finding a kit. They were impossible to find, but I went into a booth, they had probably like six or seven different pattern kits, and I got two that I have wanted, and I wish I had gotten one more, and I'm a little mad at myself that I didn't. But hopefully, I'm gonna look them up and see if they still have, they probably don't, but I, I thought I'd look them up and see if they still have the one that I wish I had bought. This is it, and we're gonna knit it for my channel, but I have to wait until Sock Madness is over. I literally gave this up. I thought it was never gonna happen. I just thought I'd never find it. So, if you don't know what this is, this is a pattern by the Socks Arena. Um, she passed away, I think it was like seven years ago. Don't quote me on this because I don't know all the ins and outs of all of it, but what has been explained to me was that there were some sort of issues with her estate. Her family couldn't figure out or didn't figure out how to continue to offer her kits. So you get everything included in the kit. You get instructions. Let me show you this book. So this is the book to make these socks. No joke, okay? I'm so excited to knit these. I almost feel like crying. It makes no sense, I know. But now that I have the pattern, I can knit these over and over if I want to. So I'm thrilled to pieces. I got it in the size medium. That was the only size they had in the boot. This is number one. I just put this in backwards. I need it in the right way so that I know what I'm looking at. And the other one, now, you're gonna see a picture, it's an illustration. You should go on Ravelry, in fact, I'll link you to other people who have finished the sock because in person it is so much prettier. This one also has like an Asian theme to it. I didn't notice that before, because, but it's just one of her other patterns that I'm super drawn to. It has beads. There are beads um, all up in the cuff and the sock is knit and then the cuff is knit like separate, not separate. It folds over and just like lays over the sock. Uh, you guys gotta see it. You need to see it in person. It is so, 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 so pretty. It's just really cool. I'm nervous about this one too, but not as nervous. Now the one that I did not buy and now I'm mad at myself because I didn't was the cowboy boot. You cannot get these new anymore unless they're like bootleg. Everything's here for me to make it. I'm very excited, but again, I have to wait until Sock Madness is over. I don't know, I, if you felt disappointed because you didn't see me there, I looked for a few of you that I knew were gonna be there. Like I tried to keep my head on a swivel and my eyes open, but it was hard because you were like sliding all over in the mud. I did go through the tent for the equipment auction. I did not see a Magicraft rose, so I didn't come back for the auction. So after, Luther and I were back in our rental and I was, um, texting with John about how the day had gone. And it's interesting because he heard something different via text than what I felt. I felt like I had a great day, a great trip. Um, everything had gone really smoothly and I was really happy. But a, a few things hadn't gone as I planned and also some of it was the rental. So he was kind of under the impression that I was like unhappy with how it went. It was not that bad. I actually thought it was great. The weather sucked, but I mean, nobody can 
control that. I decided after looking online about how long the route would take me at that time that I was gonna pack up and go home and spend Mother's Day at home. The weather was supposed to be really nice here and it was. And so I drove another 10 and a half hours home with one stop in Cleveland. When I got there, I went into a rest area. I lock everything all up with like the windows cracked for Louis. And he also got to go potty, of course. And notice that my car was making like a little bit of a like rattly noise. But as soon as I hit the gas, I checked the temp, I checked all the tires. Um, and as soon as I hit the gas, the, the, um, the noise went away so I thought okay so while I'm idling I'm just something's vibrating a little bit more and it's just rattling a little but it's okay because everything seemed okay with the, everything else well it's not okay so I drove the rest of the way home safely no problems we got home John looked at it googled it and he's like oh crap I think your whatever flex plate I think he called it is cracking and I'm like what's that? So he explained it to me and I'm like, that makes a lot of sense because I did notice a few times on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, you're going up and down hills, you're going around curves. I did notice that my RPM seemed weird based on like whether I had my foot on the gas, what speed I was going, whether I was going uphill. It didn't seem to fit some of the time and I thought, mm, that's your imagination. You haven't taken a long trip in this car yet, so you're probably just imagining it. And I didn't say it to him, but when he told me like how it all works, I was like, oh crap. So I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck home, but the weather's beautiful. I'm gonna sit outside on the deck and spend the rest of the day. I enjoyed Mother's Day so much, although I was tired. I sat outside, fell asleep outside, and I am so sorry, like seriously from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry if you felt disappointed. Um, but I felt like it was a wonderful trip. It was great. I enjoyed every single minute of it. I finished three books. Um, I just had a great time. So I hope to see some of you at Michigan Fiber Festival in August and at Rhinebeck in October, and I promise I'll do better, and I will plan for the weather better. And I hope if you were there, you had a great time. I would love to see everything that you got in the Facebook group, and I will see you guys Sunday for the live. I appreciate you. Meeting a few of you in person makes me appreciate you even more. I don't know why I get choked up. I'm gonna go now, and I just had a great time. Maryland Sheep and Wool was amazing. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.